sadness for most of us. But it's also an evening of remembrance and gratitude. Kumar Shani was a friend to most of us, a mentor to many of us, a major filmmaker, somebody who had a very sharp intellect, who was ideologically very alert and alive. He made two films on classical dance and two on Hindustani classical music. I have the honor of having produced one of them, Khayal Katha, which was incidentally born out of a conversation we had by chance in the, on the stair, sitting on the stairs of Jahangir Art Gallery. Till then, I did not know. I knew that uh, Manikal, his friend and colleague, was deeply involved in Drupad. And because of money called, we established a Drupad Kendra in Bhopal. But that Kumar had learned music from two gurus. And, and then in the conversation appeared, he wanted to make a film on the emergence of Khayal out of the rigidities of Drupad. And I had already taken a bit of a risk by having money called to a film on Mukti Bhut which was universally condemned by the Hindi left. Uh, in fact, there was almost going to be a physical assault on him at the opening of the show in, in uh, Romania. But I decided to take another risk. And it was full of uh, other impediments. We had a very stupid chief minister, and he had appointed an equally stupid chairman of the Film Development Corporation, and then we had a big fight, etc. But the film got made. I have selected a few extracts from the only book I think that he ever published, a selection of his writings, which was edited by Ashish Rajya Dhyaksh and was published by Tulika Books, and the Raza Foundation had some support provided for it. So it's the best to remember him in his own words. We have forgotten that things need to be administered, not people. <coughs> the growing need for mass media has arisen because people are not to be allowed to organize themselves. The spurious sensuality of the mass media is meant to replace lived experience <coughs> in which pain and pleasure are both intense and beautiful, sustained. Such a cinema cannot ask questions. Its images are totalitarian, but the raw materials of these images, those vulgar weapons, are ones of this earth. What we can use is the vigor, the malleability of the raw material with which these weapons are forged. What we can use are these marvelous obscenities that are foundation of all art, and that continue to ornament our temples, to ward off the evil spirits, to keep away the new vandals of our feelings. What we can do is to affirm ourselves by refusing to let pain or pleasure, a revolutionary success or defeat, come to us by proxy. Only then can practice be free of ideology. We might yet discover cinema as an art, not condemned to redeeming lost contact with the world, but in positive affirmation of knowledge and freedom. <laughs> Another one. All this can, however, be done if the artist does not calculate social relevance from box office receipts, cathartic participation, or the closeness of images to narrow religious idiosyncrasies. Nor can it be achieved through high-pitched ideological rhetoric 
with formal, therefore conceptual, untidiness in attempt to substitute thematic vocabulary for content and grammar. So much, such an approach can only lead back to subjectivist anarchism, manipulating the people to revolt impotently against individual circumstances of poverty and deprivation, rather than against the entire social order with a code which only organized practice and conscious theory can unravel. Third one, our epic theater not only used music as part of its narration, it had linked itself to what we clearly find as a correspondence with music in the gesture and the use of verbal imagery. In Kuryattam, Draupadi's lotus eyes, touched by Kajal, could find a myriad means of expression through the employment of a few basic modes. The curvatures of sculpture find a unity in our aesthetic with the melodic lines that lead to a point of rest, nyasa. It is this epic universe, unity, that we seek today, which would include in the theories of causation, in, in which would include in it the theories of causation and of history that have shaken us from our refined slumber. It is chronology, not narrative that we have to abandon. If only by recognizing the tension between available forms that one can achieve any transformation. This applies even to systems available within the culture like Margi and Desi in ours. I am led to believe that remarkable achievements of our poets in creating or infusing our languages with vitality from the period of the same poets has been in the recognition of such tensions at both a social and linguistic level. The development of the khayal into what has been aptly termed a classical, a classic romantic form owes its effervescence to precisely the tension generated between the margi and the desi, the temple and the court, the court and the people, the nomadic and the settled. Next one, Guru Kelchan Mahapath believes in the moment of dance, in the invocation of what leads to our space, as the space that is finally created, in which we feel freed from the concreteness of the world, which turns into an atmosphere of cinematographic imagination, displaying the imminence of that reality, not fixing it, from which emerges the pun the exchange of energy between nature and culture, between male and female, dancer and camera and recorder, consonance and dissonance. Next one, while so many of our literatures, of our musical forms and our paintings have emerged from the abstraction of a particular sensuous reality, and while that reality has changed and led to newer forms of abstraction, this problem, this need recurs, the need for an identity, a need that is in every one of us. This need again and again takes us back to tribal forms, into regressions that threaten the survival of the identity itself, for they do not equip us to face the challenge that the world around is posing to us. Cinema is always adopting from a world of signs, even when it does not intend to do so. Most audiovisual address, especially the calculated and the instrumentalist, always has an oblique set of meanings to offer, apart from the obvious or intentional or subliminal ones. When it adopts from any other art, be it literature or music, architecture or its absence, the cinema has to submit to it simultaneously as the cinema demands the submission of all arts to preserve the dignity of every art that comes together with the other. It has to let those lotus buds open out 
like eyelids awakening. This is, this was and this would remain Kumar Shahni. We have, I think, Madan Gopal Singh to initiate the evening, apart from these words of Kumar Shahni, by some singing. <coughs> Friends, I have a short narrative before I begin, and that's that I don't know how I met Kumar. Um, maybe in Sundarnagar at uh, Nilima Sheikh's place, where we used to meet very often in the evening, singing, uh, singing things which were from late 17th, 18th century stuff from the Punjabi Hissakari tradition. We were trying to make some sense of what was going on, what was going wrong with India towards the end of the 70s. It was a very, very painful period. And this is the period when I went back to my language, Punjabi, and I went back to um, uh, the Sufi poets, basically the Sufi poets, and I went back to I went back to music. I have no training in music. I have more or less stopped singing, but uh, my very first sort of, you know, um, um, opening into film music was through Kumar. And we had some discussions about, not only about the Sufi traditions of Punjab, but also of Sindh. And there was um, as if uh, a mystery that he was trying to sort of, you know, uh, a knot that he was trying to undo uh, about his childhood, stopping somewhere in 1940 and not letting travel back. I think with his going away, it is as if not a slice but a time is withered away. And I don't speak from a position of nostalgia. I do not. Times are much far worse today. So, I will try singing. It was, I could sing very high pitch uh, uh, songs those days. <laughs> I'm no longer that young. I don't know how it will happen. I will make mistakes, please do forgive me for that. This is from the Risabari tradition. Come, my dear, visit me once again. Come, hug me. Just a glimpse of your face is as if I have performed my Hajj. Come, come once again. Gal lagwe 
this is where Rana Sahib is going up the mountain and renouncing his clothes and hugging a tree, if you remember. And there was another song, again from one of his productions, that I did for, this is the first song that I did for his, for his uh, film. Tall and stately the rosewood trees, through them meanders the river deep silently. I sit by the river, washing clothes, come home, come home, somehow. Uchiya lamia, talia ve belia, vich ve bage darya. Main darya te kapde paito ma, kise bahane mil ja tu mainu. किसे बहाने मिल जा आ arise like the sun in my courtyard each morning arise like the moon on the rooftop each evening come home come home somehow सर्गी वेल दिल दे बेड़े सूरज बन चढ़वा शाम वेल दिल दे बने रे चन बन के चढ़वा वो सजना चन बन के चढ़वा दीज वे द टू सॉन्ग्स दैट आई सैंग इन द फर्स्ट टू फिल्म इन फैक्ट देर वॉज अनादर वन विच आई एम फॉरगेटिंग नाउ एंड ही वॉज लाइक पार्ट ऑफ माई ग्रोइंग अप when i saw aditi walking through the space and when i saw smita patil walking down the highway i understood why he didn't need us close up there i understood it very clearly this is so different from what we had seen for the first time i saw a woman walking through space in a way that i had never imagined before for me that is the beginning of my second life of engaging with ideas and emotions i miss him i miss him dearly and finally before i end i just have one request there's one film that he made which he never got to see and i think it is an incumbent upon us to ensure that that film is retrieved from from wherever it is and at least it becomes available to people like us with these words i close my argument here thank you ashok ji ne mujhe zimmedari di hai ki main yahan ke dost स्टूडेंट्स कोलीग्स यहाँ सब आए हैं तो एक एक करके सबके बुला दूँ इससे पहले मुझे सडनली मदन से याद आया कल मेरे पास वनराज वाड़िया का एक इंटरव्यू लंबा इंटरव्यू है उनका उसमें एक सेक्शन है उस सेक्शन को देखे कुमार की फिल्म कस्बा का एक सॉन्ग है जो इस सुसाइड सॉन्ग और कुंद कुमार खुद म्यूजिशन थे मैंने उनको घर पे सुना है उनके घर पे तानपुर उनके रियाज सुने हैं तो वनराज बहुत गजब की ऑब्जर्वेशन उसमें देते हैं वो कहते हैं कि कुमार बहुत सख्त था यार बहुत ही वो ये इंसिस्ट करता था यही करना और कुछ नहीं करना तुमको क्योंकि गाना गाना था लता मंगेशकर को 
और वनराज भाटिया पहली बार जिंदगी में लता भाई को रिकॉर्ड करेंगे मुझे याद है मैंने कुछ शाम को फोन किया एक रात पहले की रिकॉर्डिंग से पहले मैं वहीं था मैं कहा मुबारक हुई और रिकॉर्डिंग लता जी पुट दैट फोन डैम फॉर डाउन सर क्या हो गया साइन नर्वस ऑलरेडी कीप डाउन शी कैन रोइन मी फाइव लॉन्ग सो शी वॉज वेरी नर्वस ऑल माई so when we came to the studio we were in the console lata bai was there they were rehearsing and there were 50 string instruments list one tabla one sarangi that's one raj bhatia thi and kumar had insisted ki ye jo bandish aap banayenge maine raag ka naam rakha hai maan aur jogi bas yahi karna aur isko ek taal mein विलंबित में तो आपने कभी फिल्म में नहीं सोचा कि विलंबित में कोई गाना गाएगा और वही एक ताल में ग्यारह मात्रा में गाना होगा और उसने कहा बस तुम इसके कर देना एंड लेटर्स लेटर्स सिंग फ्रीली उसको तुम तंग नहीं करना कि वो कैसे करेंगे और राज कहते हैं मैंने कहा अच्छा मैं उनको फ्री छोड़ दूंगा मैंने भी बांध दिया उन्हें क्या किया उन्होंने बिगिनिंग और एंड पे भीम पलासी डाल दी एंड If you look, listen to that entire score. It took them three hours to rehearse, and everybody ran lata bai. It was it was a, you know, silence. Everybody, no, in drop silence. Nobody could do anything till she gets her character's record. First take was for everybody. It was good. She said, "Sir, no, one more will do, Varaj. Console, you should see console. Lata bai. She has never done it in her life." record is lataji or asha bhosle when the composer says recorder says okay take the man who is on the console they don't watch they go home and you never they never come in the console to listen to what they have done never and you get dusra take the ho gaya i was what on raj was being up and out to usko kisi ne kaha are bad mujhe kya karna hai gana to inko karna hai because he was very जाएगी तभी तो बजाऊंगा ना नहीं अभी बजाओ सॉन्ग कंप्लीटली एंड लुक एट कुमार कुमार बार सर्कुलर गोइंग गोइंग एंड 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 कमिंग यू कैन सी देम 
is key rehearsal. See, the, what was good about this man called Kumar Shahi? You could bounce an idea on him and he will come with the ears. He will decode it for you. Is come and they come and suddenly they come to Magusato, the bed, bed, drawing room. Simita was rehearsing all the postures with the speech. He would go like this, then you turn the toss, or Trivang, you know, Jaiga, Puri. And it was this, and then this shot had to be taken. But news care, KK, Naya Paya. KK is in some big commercial film, you can't get out of it. So Kumar is in panic, I say, Oga. So they me too, and come to this assistant, he will do it. So Mutun, Uskito, Hati Nile Paya, I think, my Kasi Karuna. We are on the location, he's doing rehearsal. Yeah. And looking around something, suddenly you see K.K. Mahajan walking on this kachara track, walking, smoking cigarette. I said, K.K. are you going? I said, Kumar ka chawt hai. He said, he's not going to sleep. I said, he's not going to sleep. He said, he's not going to sleep. And did the shot and it was in two shots. I said, I remember another thing. I said, I started to do a lot of work. I said, we did a lot of work for 10 years. उत्साह था करने के लिए आप मध्य प्रदेश काफी घूमते थे तो एक बार अशोक जी ने मनीकोर और मुझको अपने साथ इंदौर ले गया कोई आदमी नहीं होगा वहाँ कोई नई दुनिया का कोई था पर कुछ चलो चलते हैं रात को आप उन्होंने फोन किया आपने कुमार जी को कि हम आएंगे सुबह के हैं चाय पीएंगे तो देवास है वहाँ अरे तानपुरी कहाँ है? अंदर से आवाज़ है, अंदर आ जाओ, तानपुरे भी मिलेंगे। अंदर जब गए तो अब तो I don't know why तुम क्या करते हो ये कि मैं कबीर का प्ले करूँ, को हरिया म्यूजिक करेंगे, आप तो स्टूपिड इतने हैं मेरे, वो तो बिग है। तो करेंगे ना? कर देंगे दोबारा वर्क कर देंगे। And you all looked at me, come when he said, you have three music over. But I came and did this exercise, I came to meet Kumar in I S C. I said Kumar, I play कर रहा हूँ मैं। he did not give any any reaction to me. What did I thought? I know what happened. He said, "No, he is not your composer. Your play is a local thing. It's more a folk play, sir. Don't get into the classical thing. You need to." And he said, "It hit me. It's the right thing, you know. The kind of play we will do. It will not work. So always, we as people, whenever he will meet me, he used to come and stay sometimes with us. Sometimes I'll stay at his place." This used to be all this bouncing, I guess. Kya kar rahe ho, kya ne kar rahe ho. I'll miss him because, you see, 70s was a time when something great was happening in this country. Parallel cinema, FFC, Mani, Kumar, everybody was making films. You could go against the government making films. But today that space is taken over completely. So this, that remained, 1970s, say, I would say, mid-80s, is a period, a golden period, whether it was theatre, whether it was films, and we intercollected. With the theatre people went into the th their films. I mean, Mani used to always tell me, Mani Lakta, the actor, actor, why Mata? I said, the theatre actor, he came to Amisha. So it was, it was, a, and that is now there now. I think, therefore, they have left a legacy which needs to be preserved, which needs to be documented, which needs to be available to youngsters to see this was the era what because today you know as what you read what Mohan has said about what has happened today for the time for I I'll miss him uh, <coughs> but wherever he is thank you Kumar for bouncing with us our ideas I have heard of his friend I met him through Kumar Nitin Desai this is a gang of his friends in Bombay uh, who were not filmmakers, but they were the people who discuss films and talk about the films. Scripts will come to Nitin. Nitin was a theatre buff also, so we were common. He will come and see my plays. And you don't know, he used to give me great criticism and I used to make any kind of a thing. You say, hey, this is wrong with that. And I request Nitin to come and see a few words. Lata ne interview diya hai us gaane pe, which is on video, and she said that it was the most difficult song that she has ever sung. Three hours rehearsal. 
and it was the greatest <laughs> song that she has ever sung. She has said this on a video. No, thing no. That I another saw. thing, Mangesh, this, her brother, Dinanath ji, the saath mein, jab us sunaa gana, to Vanraj ko kaha, ye, tune to tiyahi badal di to to dohi mahi kar diya to hai. There was a tiyahi. This is not a typical thing. It was not there. थिएटर कर रहे हो यार फ्रेंड्स माय कनेक्शन विद कुमार इज वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम मोस्ट ऑफ यू कुमार आई एंड आई the closest of friends for over 70 years he was a he was a pillar of support for me and uh, as uh, mb says in some ways i was to him and the 75 years that we were close friends i cannot remember any even once having an argument with him or a fight with him so i am here more as somebody who knew him from a very young but we, we were not that old, so we were only about seven or eight years old when we got together. When we were in school, the really reason we got together was Kumar, as you know, had, a, uh, had had polio, so he was a little limp. So he could not participate in all the uh, sports things that we were required to do in school. And that brought me together because I was totally useless at the sports stuff. So uh, that was a very good excuse for me to get in touch with him and be, whenever the sports days were going on, the two of us would be there. There's a third person, Chandish uh, in Hathyanjari, who now lives in Canada. And the three of us, for a very long period, were known as the Three Musketeers, particularly in the Princeton College when we uh, got there. And in many ways, uh, our relationship was focused very much on the intellectual side of it. Uh, part of the politics that we, well, Kumar and I share, not necessarily Jagdish. Uh, Jagdish is a libertarian, Kumar and I were more left-oriented and so on. Came out during that period when we were you know, senior students in school and later in college and so on. And, but the other thing which strikes me is Kumar in those days was a writer of poems. He used to write poetry a lot, but he didn't, he hasn't really, he didn't really appreciate what he had written, then so he's thrown it away. So I'm afraid I can't recite uh, uh, anything for you. But you know, a poet, uh, a, po a poem does not convey uh, no, an event or a person through some descriptive narrative. It's, a, it's something which does it very gen different way. By and expects, and it's, so it's you as a reader who have to then derive what the poet is uh, getting at. But that's not the only thing. When you write a poem, the language is, matters not just for its meaning. You also worry about rhythm, rhyme, etc. So in many ways what I sense in Kumar's approach to films is this attitude of, of a poet. If I had to describe his work for films, I'd say this is the work of a poet. He is not trying to convey to you something in <coughs> narrative terms or even a character in terms from descriptive terms. It's something that he wants you to get from watching that film. And that's the other dimension. I noticed that in his films, and not only did I notice, he said so uh, openly also, that what matters is the, la the, the color that you use. You know how f fussy he was about the color of the saris particularly which the ladies would wear and so on, even the background of the, uh, the, the, the walls and things of this sort. There's an episode in Tarang where everything is white, you know, and the, he, he must have done a lot of work in getting everything white there, you see. So he, and also sound. He used to be very particular 
about correlating the way the sound comes across in a film with the way the visual side of thing comes across also in a film. So in that sense, that's a second dimension of poetry, which was reflected in his uh, work. But I can't say that I had much to do with his work as a filmmaker. My connection with him was more as a personal friend, <laughs> and to some extent, a commonality on the, uh, on the area of politics, uh, etc. And in that area, one of the things that is worth looking at, it, it, I think his politics had came out in its sense. What was the politics that drove us? It was a great belief in justice. Not justice in some narrow sense, but justice in terms of how people behaved with each other, how people treated each other. And that has been there in his uh, work. And of course, it was connected a little with Marxism in some parts and so on. If I see Karan, that film is the one which comes closest to an expression of his political views. Most of the, the, the Taran is very much focused on his political views, which are linked to justice in society and so on. And there, in many ways, Tarang was a little more of a narrative uh, uh, film than some, some of his other films. But notice that in Indian Tarang, he was very fussy about how, and he mentioned the question of, uh, of the uh, song, uh, you know, that, that song in, in, in Tarang. But in many other ways, he was very, uh, very focused on how something was said, etc. And notice that even in Taran, it ends on an extraordinary thing, you know, the long conversation between uh, you know, Roha, Rahul and the, 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 the Svita and uh, uh, Amir. <coughs> and that song is an open expression of the political ideas of justice, etc. If you remember that. Very, when they took the two of them walk on the, uh, the, 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 bridge. the bridge and have that argument. So he was somebody who brought these things together. He was also uh, very focused on learning things. You mentioned that uh, about, you know, about his the passion with which he uh, learned uh, music because he felt that he had to do that if he were to really if bring in, in his films, this correlation between sound, visualization, etc. He also was very connected with, uh, with artists. No? Akbar Padamsi was a great friend of his. In fact, he was so influential that Akbar Padamsi actually has made a painting which is a reflection of how films should be made. You know, uh, it's not a good painting, but he did made a, <laughs> make a painting uh, of that. So, in many ways, uh, what I really want to remember and commemorate is perhaps what many of you will do so, is Kumar is a friend. Because there was a quality of his friendship which was very, very focused. He would never mince his words, but he never mistreated his friends. And that is perhaps what many of you will also share uh, with me. So today, as we are meeting at the memorial, we certainly mourn his passing. But I would like to also see it today as a way of celebrating a wonderful person's life. And for all of us, in some ways, he has brought in a degree of special things in our life, in the intimacy that he gave us, in the way he behaved with us. So even though I am not, unlike most of you, I am not been very connected, but I had one small connection with this film. If you see Maya Darpan, there is one shot where uh, in Gorbandar Creek, and at that time uh, he asked me to take him there. So I, we went in my car, my old car in Bombay, and I drove there. Now, unfortunately, that car was bright red in color. And there is a little episode in Gorbak in, in Maya Dapan. You see, you see that red car in the distance. Uh, he, and he, 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 of course, then harangued me. So why did you bring such a red car? <laughs> and so on. But he, he didn't remove it. So that is my very limited connection with his work. In film. But the other part, I says, I have watched his films and enjoyed them greatly, including the one which many people get a little worried about Maya Dapan. 
Now that is an extraordinary film in many ways. If you do look at it again, and there you will really see what I'm trying to tell you about how here was a man who was a poet by temperament, who was, and that film Maya Darpan is comes closest to this notion or some to seeing his films as a piece of poetry rather than as a piece of prose. So do look at Maya Darpan again and set, look at it from this perspective that it's a piece, it's a poem, it's not uh, not a story of uh, and so on. So with all of you, I want to turn to Rimdi. She has been a wonderful person <laughs> with him for 30 years. She has worked with him very closely on all his films and has been a great support to him. <coughs> she is somebody who I would say is more than a friend, is more is somebody who was a great companion who really made his life wonderful. So really we are all here with you in mourning his passing but also celebrating the life that he led and the friendship that he gave to all of us. Thank you. एक कहानी हो रहा है जो मैं दो फिल्मों में आई एक्टेड इन टू फीचर फिल्म्स कस्बा में जो तो मुझे तुमसे बात करनी वेर ऑन द लोकेशन इन हिमाचल प्रदेश हाँ क्या करना है तो डायरेक्टर जून की थी समथिंग अच्छा चलो चलते हैं तो वी वर लिविंग सेपरेट हाउस ई केम देयर महाजन माई सर वे मेकिंग फूड चिकन बनाएंगे उसको भी खिलाएंगे यार ये तो खाता भी नहीं कुछ है इसी में लगा रहता है सनी इसमें जो कल सीन है यू नो इट इज सीन इज बेसिकली प्रिपेयरिंग मी टू डू समथिंग सो दैट व्हाट दैट्स व्हाट ही सेड यू नो इट्स द इमेज ऑफ अ क्राइस्ट इट इज एलिगोरिक विद यू नो विद द बाइबल दे इज दैट यू कैन गो दैट अ ट्री एंड दैट्स अरे क्या कब्र उतारने हैं ना मुझे तो ही जस्ट शूज तो करेगा खेत में जब जाते पहाड़ी में सो वेट अप एंड वी सो ब्यूटिफुल ट्री Alone there, and suddenly, God, there's a cloud at the back, and the wind started, you know, moving this tree up and down. Oh, me, what gaddi ka costume kena tha? Mahajan ne camera lagaya. Madam, I'm abhi niche kha rahi hain breakfast, sorry. Unko aana hai upar. Abhi bata dena jab shot hoga. Kahan bata dein? And something magic he saw there. He says, Raina, are you ready? I said, Yes, I'm ready. Or pakka, me ka pakka, thand lag rahi hai. Jaldi karo. and camera was on i stripped it completely naked i think this is the first nude male scene in indian cinema and i had to raise the tree and ho gaya khatam to hum niche gaye fat gaya dab and these ladies are slamming tea and the kumar wo tum niche kyun gaya he said what shot are you talking that's done go <laughs> now i call upon the rajiv please come His role in Tarang as uh, is the only type of politics that uh, Kumar Kumar would have done had he remained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very much Kumar. Yeah, yeah that was.
to do something to the effect that uh, one could or one could not just see and feel uh, Siddhartha's apples, but one can smell them. And uh, instantly, I think uh, Kumar said that that's true of all great art. Uh, we we grasp them, uh, the great piece of art by our whole body, and we relate relate to it with all our senses. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, and that was that conversation turned into other. Uh, chain of conversations at different places uh, and form the basis of our friendship. Uh, so it's 80, 80 81, uh, June now to 2024, so more than 45 years. Um, anybody who saw Maya Darpan in 1972 <coughs> would have instantly uh, come to the conclusion that this was a very significant work and that uh, it's a landmark in Indian cinema and a distinct voice was born uh, in world cinema indeed. Uh, so he was a remarkable filmmaker and uh, many friends have spoken about it. But I uh, I think what I found remarkable about Kumar, I mean, one would expect that, you know, here is a very westernized, uh, Parisian, uh, you, you know, artist uh, influenced by Bresson, and he would be steeped in, you know, major uh, multiple traditions of the West. But what I, when we all came to know this, and this is something which has been said by Ashokji, by MK, by Madan, uh, the first thing that you learned about Kumar was how deeply, deeply anchored he was in the traditions of the subcontinent. I mean, the nuance, the the delicacy, the uh, complexity, and the insight with which he approached every single art uh, uh, of the subcontinent was absolutely amazing. I mean, one could just sit there and learn so much about each of the arts. I mean, you know, learn, learning music is only one thing, but he could actually, could have been any poet. He could have been a poet, he could have been a painter. He could be anything. He could just, he was just that sort of a person. Um, so, somebody who was equally at ease, equally at home in the multiple traditions of the West and in the multiple traditions of the continent. He could talk, you know, uh, with, uh, with, with uh, a, a great degree of insight about both. He knew about, uh, I mean, every, everybody knows uh, he had a, he had a, uh, 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 he was a friend of Pina Bausch, but he also had so much friendship with Chandra and and with uh, with Kelu Babu, uh, he uh, he could he could he had known uh, you know his Joyce and his Proust, but he also knew Tulsi and uh, and and Kabir and uh, and all as, as well as Bhakti Bodh. I mean, it was this this classical music. I mean, he knew his Mala, but he also knew uh, uh, Kumarji. Uh, uh, and, so, and this is something which is uh, which I find absolutely remarkable about Kumar. I mean, some uh, nobody nobody I know uh, 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 did it better than him. Uh, and of course, he was he was he was a he was a he was, a, he was a, really a complete artist, uh, not just a filmmaker, a complete artist. He was a he was a philosopher. He was a thinker of art. But he was not just a thinker of. Uh, the arts. He he would suddenly call up and talk, start talking about uh, uh, global uh, politics, about you know what is about uh, about capitalism, uh, but most of all about ideas, European ideas. I mean, one of the things uh, I remember. Uh, I mean, this is a discussion that we constantly had, both when we met and uh, over the phone, whether he was in Delhi or 
uh, you know, living in, uh, in these halls or in Pune or, or in, uh, now in Calcutta, uh, you would just call and we start talking about uh, modernity, uh, one of his favorite uh, uh, sub subjects and uh, how modernity cannot be reduced to the Enlightenment, how romantic uh, thought was also an integral part of, of modernity and how there was a contradiction between the two and yet these contradictions, unresolved contradictions and how modernity has to be understood and how uh, even in a, in, a, in a thinker such as Marx, both these are present, unresolved contradiction, unresolved tensions uh, of both the, the romantic uh, and the enlightenment, how they are, they are uh, present and how uh, we found it so difficult uh, when uh, when Marxism was reduced to a certain kind of instrumentalism or a class-based political realism or a certain kind of utilitarianism uh, and that all came from a very strong uh, association of Marxism with, with a certain kind of romantic thought. Uh, ideas of alienation, for example, couldn't, can't be understood without that relation, that sort of idea is uh, you know, some, 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 something which is to do with the romantics. And, uh, what else? I mean, the, yeah, he was a great friend. Uh, he was, uh, he was a, a wonderful friend. I mean, not just an intellectual companion, but also a great friend. And, and uh, a friend not just of, uh, I mean, he's not just my friend. He was a friend of the family. I mean, uh, Dani uh, and... Uh, and, you know, Uttara, I mean, Vita and Devan were local guardians of Uttara, one set of local guardians, and Rajiv and Tani were the other. So when she came, we knew her as a precocious child, but when she came to, uh, to LSR, she very often stayed with us, uh, and we were listed as a uh, guardian. And when she, and uh, Arun, uh, uh, Kumar invested a lot in our children. I mean, uh, Aranyani, Vanya, I remember, uh, Rimli would recall this, on the 20th of Jan, I, I sent this, 2024, I sent a message uh, announcing Vanya's uh, latest book. And Kumar was already, you know, uh, he had fallen and he was being taken to the hospital. And he tells me that he, when he heard about it, he smiled and he sent his best wishes to her. But the same thing about with Aranyani, you would always... Uh, come to all our performances and uh, whenever he was present in whichever part of the city uh, and uh, always call her, give her, give her feedback. <coughs> and that was not just uh, our rela his relationship with our daughters, but also my relationship <coughs> with his daughters. Uttara uh, was a political science student and she, uh, not only in LSR, but when she came to JNU, uh, she, I direct, you know, I taught her. So. So this, this was also this in mutual investment in each other's children. I mean, uh, that was extremely uh, important and for, for us. I'll, 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 the other thing, of course, is that he shared his friends. And if I, at once I said I'm going to Paris, and he sort of wrote me a letter and wrote letters to everybody in Paris. Everybody knew. I mean, I can't remember the Lippert Kaunkar, uh, Akbar's daughter, Raisa Patamsi, and others I can't remember. If I went to Chennai, he would say, you must meet my brother, who is, he's a, he's a, uh, uh, he, so he would send a letter off to uh, his own brother and write me a letter and introduce us, and I would make it a point to go and see him. Uh, so uh, this, this, uh, this whole, uh, this, this uh, quality of sharing friends, being not only a good friend, but also, Open this generosity, this with which he shared his friends, uh, was just uh, remarkable. Uh, on, I just say one more thing before I finish. I mean, on the, I think Rimli uh, came uh, with Kumar on the last we met. I think was twenty on seventh of July, twenty twenty one, and that was also the day when Dilip Kumar had passed away. So he came in the evening, both of them on in, and we opened our, our pitara of drinks and uh, I couldn't resist asking him about the Kumar. 
So I, I, I mentioned that I'd met him once uh, with Banya and Tani and, uh, and Dilip Kumar was charming. He was so <coughs> wonderful. Uh, he, he kind of tapped, uh, uh, gave a little, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, touched uh, Banya's cheek and said, she was small, she said, Rasagulla. And, and, and so he said, you know, this is quite uh, funny. I mean, this is a, a remarkable coincidence because I was, uh, like he said, he was about 11 or 12 years old and he came out of his house on, uh, on, in Burley and he found, he was in his kurta pajama or night suit and he said he, he found that there were a lot of reflectors everywhere. And uh, so he went uh, to, in, in, to, uh, to, the, to what was happening and found that it was a film shoot of Dilip Kumar. And Dilip Kumar turned around and saw Kum Kumar and did exactly the same thing. He was small, he was about 11 or 12. He just tapped him on his cheek and said, how do you know me? And uh, Kumar said, I've seen your films. And he was astounded that a small, a child so small had seen his films. And he said, the way he looked at me, it was an inspirational moment. He said he'd never seen an actor, uh, you know, such a great actor as, as Dilip Kumar. And uh, he said his, his life was made on that day when uh, Dilip Kumar smiled at him, touched him. Uh, and then he said, he told me that uh, he made, wanted to make a film on Dilip Kumar. So he proposed uh, to him. And that it was a film to be made in 16 millimeters. So Dilip Kumar uh, agreed, but then he backed off. But he backed off uh, in, in a very graceful manner. He came to Sagar Darshan unannounced and told him why he couldn't do a film in 16 millimeters. He said so many. I mean, I, that's what Kumar said. So, Rimli would remember so many crows are invested in him that if he made a film in 16 millimeter, you know, the entire industry will collapse. <laughs> he said, it's possible for Marlon Brando to do it, but not possible for Dilip Kumar to do it. And so uh, he said, he won't be able to, to do this film. And uh, we missed the bloody you know, great opportunity of film on Dilip Kumar by Kumar Wow. <laughs> but uh, there's so many other stories. Uh, it will take me ages, you know. Uh, but I mean, he's been a great uh, uh, intellectual uh, companion, a friend, somebody who would just call uh, and, and talk for hours uh, on end uh, from no matter where he was. I was in Germany uh, when he you know, three, uh, when, I, when I had my own uh, little health incident and he didn't know about it and he would just call me and I couldn't stop listening to him even though I was not well because that's what he was. He would just, uh, he would just pour his heart out uh, and uh, yeah, it was, his, his, uh, he had a curiosity about others. There was a warmth in him which uh, Nathan talked about. I mean, he was a, he was a very, very, warm person and, and no matter how many years he would be uh, out of touch with you, you know, when you met him, it was like not a single day had passed without meeting him. Uh, so I, it, I really, really miss him, uh, like well, Tani and uh, I'm both my children and uh, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, uh, I, uh, my heart goes out to, to everybody who is uh, sitting here and, and especially to Rimli, Uttara, uh, Rebu and also uh, Roshan. Uh, thanks. See, when Kumar and Mani used to come here, there was a whole lot of youngsters, young filmmakers, they were how we did together. It was like a team and in fact till end they were with Mani and Kumar, they took after. We have Raman here. Where is Raman? Please come. Because he is one of those people who has been there with the film movement from 70s onwards 
ideas. No, you say you're <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, my name is Raman Chavda. <clears throat> and I heard about Kumar much before I actually uh, met him. Uh, we used to do theatre and one of our friends had joined the FTII film school. So we used to hear stories of, of FTII and, and there were two names that were all the time coming up in the conversations with our friend. Those were Mani and Kumar. And uh, the way our friends spoke about them were like they were gods of cinema in India. Uh, later on I was working in the French embassy and, and my, my boss was a friend of Mani and Kumar and they used to often come over to meet and they got to know me from there and, and we used to be at that time one of the few places where the films that could not be seen elsewhere in the cinemas were, you know, we were able to show them. And so Kumar's and Mani's films were often screened over there and our uh, relationship grew from, from that, uh, those interactions that we had organizing the screening, inviting guests for the screening, and uh, introducing them to the audiences. And so that, that was, uh, uh, so and, and they, later on, they, my boss left for France, and Kumar and Mani, both of them, continued to, to come over to the French embassy, talk with me, and I, it was very moving for me. I mean, I was, I was in my 20s at, at that time, and these guys were, my friends spoke of them like gods, and this was a huge honor uh, that they, they would come, call, and come over, meet, and talk, spend t any time with me. I mean, uh, so I have those kind of memories, and I remember that uh, Kumar was, I was still working at the French embassy when Kumar said he was going to make Charatyai, and he wanted me to come and assist. I mean, I have no background in filmmaking as such. I, mean, I was working in the film department. We were showing films, but I had no idea of how to make a film. And so I, and I had been to a shoot uh, that Kumar was doing, Kayal Gatha, in which my wife acted. Uh, and uh, so I, I knew how rigorous the work of, uh, you know, making a film is. And of course, I, I had to tell her that I am working at the French Embassy, so I may not be able to take time off to commit myself to such a rigorous sort of work, and especially if Kumar is sh shooting that film. So I, I, I proposed the name of my friend Munish, who is sitting here. Munish is a, a filmmaker trained in FDII, and, and it turned out to be a very happy experience for both of them. So I. So I'm happy about that. Um, I, I will, I will sh sadly miss Kumar and, and equally money. And these people, the stories we've heard are that when they were at FTI, they were inseparable. I mean, they had to literally pull themselves apart to separate for a little while, but they were all the time together, and they would go on walks and. Of course, I imagine they were having those conversations that only these two could have had with each other. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, it hasn't sunk in yet that Kumar is not here. Uh, it will take some time and, and, and we will sort of... Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, wherever he is, I mean, he is in a better place. I mean, uh, I will console myself and like all of us will. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for letting me speak. You mentioned Monish. What is Monish? Please come. You have worked with him. He has been your teacher. He was a student also. <coughs> He's a <coughs> filmmaker by himself also. <coughs> Hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, so uh, Raman did in, uh, tell me about uh, Charadhyay. And I quickly contacted Kumar and when I met him and uh, he was very happy to take me on board. Uh, the only problem was that I was already committed to another film that uh, I was assisting on 
and uh, there was about like a five day uh, overlap uh, you know of the shoot that was supposed to happen in in Mumbai and of course Jared they had most of it was shot in uh, uh, in Kolkata and around um, and Kumar was said uh, that's okay you just keep coming as much as you can and you join us uh, whenever you can um, and that was that uh, one of the uh, you know uh, I, I really think it was one of the you know the most cherished uh, time of my life to work with Kumar to you know have a conversation with him every day uh, for about 35 days uh, you know just to have him to myself and you know sit with him and talk to him I remember um, one bus ride that we were taking and I, I, was a, I was a very very young kid I was I think in, in 1996 I was all of about uh, 20 26 years old I think uh, so I asked Kumar I said Kumar where were you born and Kumar looks at me and says, I was born in Mohenjo Daro. <laughs> and, and instantly I said, how old are you? <laughs> and, he, and he started laughing and he said, well, actually I was born near Mohenjo Daro. You know, so on and so forth. But the one thing that I'll, I'll always remember is, you know, as, uh, as students of cinema, you know, uh, filmmaking is all, you know, I, 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 when, when you're shooting a film, uh, most filmmakers are concerned about story samajh aa rahi hai ki nahi you know ye shot agla shot kya hoga you know story mein kaise uh, but with kumar and kk it was something that i've not seen before and after uh, the relationship that the two of them uh, shared and it's very difficult to explain uh, how they would arrive at a shot of course with kumar every shot was a complete film within itself you know that you know there was a there was a beginning and there was an end. It was almost like, like a canvas, and they started drawing on it and then added colors to it, and then finally that canvas was complete, from action to cut. Uh, and this is how Kumar would explain the shot to uh, KK. He would say something like, uh, "So uh, at this point of time, what she's going through is like a inner conflict, which comes to her from." And KK would be listening and he said, Ek circular track lagao. <laughs> and I would be saying, how does this translate into a circular track? What Kumar is saying uh, is, is, is very poetic and it's, it's something that uh, is very interesting about, you know, the emotion of the scene or emotion of the character. How does it translate for KK into a, into a circular shot? And, and then I would keep listening and then Kumar would continue. And, Never did I hear Kumar say, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do this and then the actor would come here and then, you know, this would, this is how normally we design shots, right? The actor would come here, the camera would do this and then it will go up and then the cap, you know, the actor will say something, etc. But it was never like that with Kumar and, and that became, I think, my training for whatever I did after that. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, after that, you know, a lot of conversations with Mani uh, would also happen. And and for example, I remember Mani was telling me one day, uh, and he would get very excited about anything. So we were talking, uh, uh, you know, Rafi Mahmood was a very dear friend and also a cameraman. And we were all sitting and talking and Rafi was narrating this incident where, uh, you know, in one of the first things that he did when he graduated from the FTI was he was assisting uh, uh, Piyush Mishra in one of the films that Mani was shooting, I think it was Nazar, and Nazar if you know, if you've seen the film, is a lot of that film is shot in very, very telephoto lenses, so the, uh, the, the focus is really critical, you know, especially for the, the focus puller. And, uh, and, uh, and at some point of time, uh, uh, they were taking a shot, which is a longest shot, and there was a curtain, the curtain would come out, and, 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 uh, and Rafi asked Mani, uh, "May focus kahan rakhu? And Mani says, "Tum dekh lena." And Rafi was a very very young uh, graduate of the FTI. He says, "Tum dekh lena matlab kya?" "Nahi tum dekh So uh, so the shot happened, and and Rafi, you know, whatever his judgment was, he, uh, he you know he chose the where the focus would be. And then at some point of time, he thought that it was wrong. So he very reluctantly went up to Mani and he said, uh, I think I missed the focus at one time, at 
some point of time when the shot was going on in the tracking. And Mani got very excited. Just Ray, come, 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 talk, talk, talk. And those were the days when you know you couldn't see the shot that you've taken because you know there was celluloid error. And and he says, I don't know, I think somewhere here. Fantastic, it's okay. Take it. <laughs> and Rafe thought that my career is over before it begins because you know when people will see this shot, they will obviously see it as a mistake. But uh, money would not. Uh, you know, see it as a mistake and money would, uh, uh, you know. And these are the kind of conversations that, you know, we kind of grew up with, you know, as filmmakers. And when I was making my own film, uh, I tried all that. And at some point of time, my cameraman said, uh, close up, nahi lena. So I said, nahi, kyun? Because the idea of a storyteller in normal commercial cinema is, ke close up, le lete hain, safe rahega. If the shot is not working, we'll cut to a close-up and, you know, uh, the shot will work. Uh, there are numerous of these stories, you know, that uh, I can tell you, you know, during the shooting of uh, Chahar Adhyay. For example, I remember um, that uh, a lot of times uh, uh, Kumar and KK would decide that this is the shot that we need to take in a particular manner. There is a shot, uh, there is a scene in, in Char Adhyay which is, uh, we used to call it the Bhai Pota scene, the, the, the Bhai Dut scene, where all the, uh, where there is a circular track uh, and, the, uh, and the shot is, uh, was taken at the Golden Hour, you know, uh, KK waited for a very long time, you know, to get the exact uh, sunlight and, you know, the exact thing. But what was important in that shot was not only the, the sunlight but also the movement of, of the two actors and how they would kind of choreograph themselves uh, within the shot while the camera is doing a, a circular uh, uh, track. And, uh, and it, I, I, I remember it, it, it really is, a, you know, in, in that sense, which is a big thing in the camera, shot as a shot, you know, there's, there's a big crane that comes down and this happens. It's just a very simple circular track and the movement of these two actors and how they are moving and the dynamics that they are creating within them, themselves and the colors that they are creating with the clothes that they are wearing. It's just, just a master class for somebody like me. I was just sitting there and seeing this is how a shot is uh, designed. Uh, it really is, you know, I will, uh, as, as recently as 14th of January this year, I met Roshan in Mumbai. She had come to see a play that I was acting in. Um, and we were talking about Kumar and, and she told us how, uh, how un unwell he was. Uh, and I started, you know, and, and uh, it's a play directed by Rajat Kapoor, who's also, uh, you know, uh, another disciple of, in fact, uh, Rajat calls him his guru. Uh, you know, and we, we just talked about Kumar at length for that, you know, that day. We just went and had coffee and all we talked about was, was Kumar and, and Rajat was telling, him, telling me how he went and very recently met him in Pune and uh, you know Kumar was talking about the, the next film that he wants to do and the, the, the films that he's already written and that somebody in America is willing to put in the money etc so on and so forth and we just talked so fondly about it not realizing that uh, you know only a few days later uh, you know we will hear the news. I have two very very prized possessions in my life. Uh, one of them is a book that was gifted to me by Mani. Uh, it's a book called Hitchcock by Trufo. It's one of the, you know, one of the wonderful books the, that uh, you know uh, on cinema that you can read, and it's personally signed by him. Uh, and that is my prized possession. I never lend it to anybody. People come to my house and say, "Yeh, I will take it." I said, "No, this is not for you. You can take it." I'm very scared of lo losing that book. And the other uh, badge of honor uh, that is very, uh, uh, you know, close to me is when uh, another friend of mine. Of course, I, I met him through Kumar. Uh, Sashi Kumar made a film uh, in 2004. He made a film called Kaya Taran. Uh, and out of the blue, I got a call from him and he said, uh, you know, I'm making a film and my friend Kumar tells me that I can't make this film without having Munish, uh, you know, as a part of the unit. And I told him, you know, I'm 37 years old now. Uh, I don't, you know, my, my assistant days are behind me. So he says, no, 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 no. He dials Kumar's number and he makes me speak to him and Kumar tells me, no, no, Munish, you have to make this film, you know. And then he said, that's all Kumar told me and, um, and that was it. I was a part of, that's the last uh, time I assisted anybody in my life, which was uh, Sashi Kumar's film, Kaya Taran, uh, thanks to Kumar. 
Um, he's a very, very special man to all of us. Uh, his films, his ideas, his imagination, his... Um, <laughs> He was almost like a father figure to a lot of us uh, and, you know, very, very, we will miss him very dearly. Thank you. There are stories and stories and stories. I would like to end this story. Can't be left behind because it just came to my mind. If we don't talk about it, we got it. It was one of his you know, real gurus. <coughs> Sabdar, me, mother, and we were dreaming of making a retrospective on Hetri Ghatak in Delhi, which was impossible. It was only a little bit possible, but Sabdar at that time was in some kind of a big officer in the West Bengal government in Delhi. And his office was just up near Regal Cinema. And there was a long table there. And whenever Kumar would be here, we'll, it was, was a real afternoon adda. And the whole idea, how it came about, we have to celebrate Dithu mm -hmm. Ghatak was, by the time India had started doing these soft diplomacy things of uh, Festival of India, and Dithu Ghatak was celebrated in England, very, very big thing, government of Italia. We, sort of left of center, left of center, what the hell, why not? Dithu uh, Ghatak. So we cooked a mystery. Uh, only at that age we can do it. We wrote a letter to Pupu Shekhar, we are telling you today, that you have celebrated them. There's another great filmmaker, and his name is this, he has done so much work, and this. And we have, we, before that we had done a retrospective of it, and there was a very nice brochure, which Mother worked very hard, and all of them worked very hard. It was some, and it was completely packed one week at Parallel Bhavan. It became a, you know, direction of the cinema changed that day in Delhi, everything. Who is Ritu Ghatak? And then small books came about on Ritu Ghatak. And uh, Kumar, I remember this, the face. He was so delighted that this has finally happened. And then Government of India, we wrote last line was, please don't misunderstand us. We do not want to be part of the festival to go abroad. We only want to give you facilities and other things because there were problems, technical and legal problems. Ritika's family had a quarrel among themselves, ownership of the film. And Sabdar were all night in their house discussing them what you are doing is wrong and convince them that we have to do this retrospective. Let it be celebrated. <laughs> it is not good that you don't let this happen. And after that, the retrospective was in. France. We were not there, but we made it possible for them. And it could not have happened if we would not have been thoroughly educated by Kumar and Mani, who this great filmmaker was. So, you know, it has been, there are stories and stories of, about his make, making, how he had to fight. There was a problem of one set of goons in uh, Taran filmmaking, the slum. We went to see this, in a taxi, ordinary taxi, we went to see the location, it was a location in a slum around a, uh, around a well, women are talking. Suddenly the man who had taken us there, he was attacked with knives, stabbed and we had to drag him in the car and Kumar could not believe this happened. So making film is not only matter for us, it is a mundane hard war almost, it's very difficult. So at that point I think uh, I want to show you to come and conclude the session. Please. I wish to mention two things. It has been mentioned that a film that he completed but has not seen is a film that he made with Ilyana Kitaristi. And it has run into some difficulty. And uh, Mar had talked to me and I wrote a letter to the lady uh, suggesting that this, you see this move seems to be to change the film from what Kumar has shot and approved without his consent. So now, now that he is no more, uh, we will have to have perhaps fight a battle 
to retrieve it in the way uh, he had intended it to be. And that's going to be difficult, but some of you may be of some help in that if we raise a collective voice, perhaps those persons may listen. It seems there's a financier who has a different uh, view uh, and uh, she wants to change it and Kumar was extremely unhappy with that. The other thing, now there are stories, so I'll end up with another story. A film that Kumar did not make. I got a phone call from him saying that the Films Division has requested him to make a film on Kumar Gandhar. But it is going to be difficult to make Kumar Gandhar agree. And I could possibly help. So I said, of course. So I rang up Kumar Gandhar. And Kumar Gandhar said, film in Chodo Shokka. He did not know much about Kumar Shani. So I told him and then he said, Achha chalo, theek hai. So I was very excited. I wrote a letter to uh, Kumar saying that he has agreed. Now a formal request to him may go from the film street. Kumar was also excited. One day he rang me up and said the letter has gone. Fine. A month passed and Films Division did not receive any reply from Kumarji. So Kumar again rang me up and said, I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to So he said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to do. कि यहाँ जहाँ खाली जगह होती है वहाँ हमारा नाम लिखा होता है और जहाँ एक और खाली जगह है वहाँ कुमार शाहनी का नाम लिखा हुआ है तो मैंने कहने को जी क्या सर आप जानते हैं कुमार जी सरकारी मामला होता है इसमें सब ऐसे ही चलता है मैं कहता हूँ तुम जो मुझे चिट्ठी लिखते हो तुम सरकारी नहीं ह it collapsed. <laughs> so anyway, there are. Um, we will plan something more substantial later, when the sadness and the mourning subside, and we we'll try to look at him more critically and more intellectually. Also, try to see most of his films could be shown in a festival. And towards that end, we will seek your support as and when this video uh, Thank you very much uh, for coming. Ashok, one little. Yeah. Sure. Just, um, okay. just for uh, everybody's uh, information and interest, about three or four days ago, I happened to stumble onto Shuddhabrata Sen Gupta's Facebook. And it seems that he has uploaded, just a few days ago, a film that they had made as Rux, I think when they were probably students at Jamia, in 1995. 97. 97? Yeah. You remember me from... Yes, I do. So, 96. And it's quite a remarkable film. There's fantastic uh, sequences with K.K. Mahajan and also the long sequence that M.K. was talking about with uh, Smita with the train uh, running in the back and a very sensitive long series of interviews with Kumar. It's on Vimeo. I can't now remember the name but if you, I think, do a Google search for uh, Kumar, Shuddha, Vimeo, you'll find the film. It's very worth seeing.